Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to consider another way that we can calculate neutral current inside an imbalanced three-phase system. Now, we've already looked at a couple of three different methods of how we can do this, but this method that I'm about to show you has a couple of advantages. The first method we saw combined a graphical representation of what was happening with the circuit, followed by some uh, mathematical procedures that helped us to get a really accurate answer to the neutral current inside that imbalanced three-phase load. Now that was a great method because it combines a, kind of a visual idea of what's happening inside the circuit combined with nice mathematical accuracy. The disadvantage of that method is that it's quite long-winded and there's a number of steps to remember. We then looked at a purely graphical method uh, where we were able to draw things to scale and measure literally what the neutral current would be. And that's a nice method because, again, you can visually see what's happening inside the circuit. It helps you to understand the interaction between the three currents when they meet in the neutral conductor, but also not as accurate as it could be. The method that I'm about to show you has no real graphical representation that I'm aware of. And this is the reason why I don't really like to use this method as a starting point for this topic, because I think it's lacking a certain amount of depth of understanding when it comes to figuring out what's happening with the neutral current. However, it has the advantage of being relatively straightforward, mathematically speaking, and again, highly accurate. So we'll go through this method, and of course, it's up to you which method you prefer to use in your day-to-day -day life when you're doing your electrical design work. But also that reminder that if this is likely to come up in an exam, then make sure that you speak to your teacher and it's very, very clear which method you're supposed to use in an exam situation. It may be that you can use any of the methods, but you may be expected to show a specific method. So just make sure that you speak to your teacher before you undertake this question in an exam scenario. So let's have a look at the method. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to remind ourselves what the currents were in our circuit that we measured. So we had L1 for starters, the current in L1 was 4.1 amperes. And if you remember, we did a video where we actually looked at measuring these values and how we arrived at them within a three phase system. So if you're not sure what these uh, values are coming from, then please go back and watch that video. Uh, however, in this case, we're just going to remind ourselves what the values were. In L2, we had 16.1 amperes flowing, and in L3, we had 8.1 amperes. And then finally, uh, we measured the current in the neutral, and that came out at a value, but then when we calculated it in the follow-up video, we saw that the value uh, came out at 10.58 amperes. So we measured it slightly different to that, and then we calculated it and we explain the reasons why those two values weren't exactly the same. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to use this formula. Now, this might seem a little bit scary at first, but let's just get it down on paper. So the current in the neutral will be equal to, let's start off by doing this, L1 squared plus L2 squared plus L3 squared, bearing in mind that these three numbers are the currents that we find in L1, L2 and L3. We then add on to the end of this, minus L1 multiplied by L2, minus L1 multiplied by L3, minus L2 multiplied by L3. And then that whole thing needs to be square rooted. So we square root that whole thing there. Now, at first glance, that formula probably looks quite intimidating. But actually, if you think of this logically, it's actually not that bad. We're just squaring all the currents and adding them together. We're multiplying each current by each other current. And then we're just taking that away from this total and square rooting the lot. So if we kind of break it down into stages, it becomes a little bit easier. So let's do that now. Let's, let's look at doing the individual stages. So first of all, let's square all the values. So first of all, we're going to be looking at L1 squared, and we'll see what that's equal to. So we're going to do 4.1 squared. So that is L1, 4.1 amps, and we're going to square that. So if we do that on our Casio FX85 GT Plus emulator on the screen here, we find that 4.1 squared is equal to 16.81, 16.81 there. 
And then we're going to do the same for L2. So we're going to square L2. And L2 squared will be 16.1 squared. So we'll figure out what that is on the calculator. So we're going to do 16.1 squared. And that comes to 259.21. 259.21. And then we're going to do L3 squared, which is equal to uh, 8.1 squared. So let's put that onto our sheet. 8.1 squared is equal to 8.1 squared is equal to 65.61. Notice I'm not putting any units on the end of here because these are largely meaningless now. They're just numbers. They don't represent any particular quantity, which is why I've not added any unit onto the end of it. So we've got our three values squared there. And now let's have a look at the next step. So we can sort of say that this is step number one, if you like. So let's have a look at step number two now. Step number two is simply going to be this part where we figure out what these numbers are going to be. So L1 times by L2 will be equal to 4.1 multiplied by 16.1. So that's 4.1, 4.1 times by 16.1. And that comes out at 66.01. So that's 66.01. And then we've got L1 multiplied by L3. So you can see we've taken L1 and we've multiplied it by the other currents. And that's going to be 4.1 times by 8.1. And we can see from our calculator, 4.1 times by 8.1 is going to give us 33.21. So we'll do that now, 33.21. And then we just do the final part, which is L2 times by L3. So the only combination we've not done there. So that's going to come out now at 16.1 multiplied by 8.1. And when we do that, 16.1 multiplied by 8.1, we come out with this value here, 130.41. So that's 130.41. So that's great. So we've done uh, the squaring of the currents, we've done the multiplying of the currents, and really all we've got to do now is just put these numbers into the formula. So let's do that now. So this really now is step three, where we put these values into the formula. So we've got uh, L1 squared came out at 16.81, and then we're going to add on to that uh, 259.21, so that's L2 squared becomes 259.21, and then we've got L3 squared, which was 65.61. And then we're going to subtract uh, all of these multiplications from there. So L1 times L2, which is this bit here, becomes 66.01, and then we're going to take away uh, L1 times L3, which is 33.21. And then we're going to take away L2 times L3, which is 130.41. And then of course, don't forget, we've got that critical part where we need to square root this whole number. So we're going to square root that whole thing. Again, looks quite intimidating. In reality, it's really not because all we're doing is just adding and subtracting a load of numbers and then square rooting it. So at this stage, we've kind of got a couple of options here, but I quite like just to uh, volley it into the calculator in one hit. So we're going to press the square root button and then we just put the numbers in 16.81. And then we're going to add 259.21. And then we're going to add 65.61. And then we are going to subtract 66.01 and we're going to subtract 33.21 and then we're going to subtract 130.41, 130.41. So there you can see there's our massive long string of adding and subtracting all square rooted. 
And if we hit the equals button, what we're hoping is we're gonna come out somewhere around 10.58 amperes. So it's going to be very interesting to see if that's what happens. So let's do the calculation and see what happens. Are we gonna come out with 10.58 amperes? We've come out with four times root seven, so we'll press the SD button and see what that comes out to. 10.583, etc. So you can see there that we've come out with a very, very uh, accurate answer, very similar to the answer that we got when we did this in the first place with our first method. So that comes out at 10.58. Again, we could go with three if we wanted, but we'll leave it at that, 10.58 amperes. And there is our neutral current. So again, uh, quite a good method. I don't think it's overly complicated. The first time you see this formula, it looks a little bit intimidating, but if you break it into stages, square the currents, and then in step two, multiply each current by each other current, and then we add the squares together, and then we take away all of the multiplied numbers and square root the whole thing, we end up with the neutral current. A slightly easier method, I think, uh, and an accurate method, absolutely. So if this is your preferred method, then feel free to use it following the cautions that were mentioned earlier on in this video. So at this point, all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching.